hello. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Friday, December 18th. We are seven days away from Christmas, and I want to bid everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy everything. Happy what everything. else am I missing, Carl? Happy Jingle Bells, because guess what? This is the last Fab Friday of the year, and this is today, of course, I forgot to say, here we go. It is... That's right. Merry Oh, thank you, Carl. Merry Christmas, everybody. We are here. This is the last Fab Friday of the year for 2020. Thank goodness we're going to be starting a new year. I think everybody's looking forward to that. It is Friday, December 18th. This is episode number 26. We're a little festive here. We've got some jingle bell earrings. We've got our Santa here. We've got our fat quarter frog with his, with his present. He's got a little gifty. His hat is right here. It's this is right. yeah, it's the Santa hat. But you know, you can like fessy these guys up, and he's got like a little silk dupioni body and things like that. So we are here today. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to have you here. Who's checking in from where? I see Nedra. Nedra, hello from Arizona. It's great to have you here. And Pat Stack from North Carolina. You guys are always here. Thank you so much, and we appreciate everybody being and tuning in today. Nancy's checking in from. Bloomington snow. with snow. Yes, I was going to say, those of you who got all that tremendous amount of snow, I hope you're safe and snuggled up and uh, already plowed out so you can get out. Julie's checking in from Oceanside. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody, and happy holidays. It's a beautiful day here in the desert. We are sitting at about what, uh, what was it about, Carl? 55 degrees out yeah. there right now. So that is really, really lovely weather for us. And it goes up to about maybe, I think it's going to go up to about 65 today. Um, and then Merry the nights get to cool. Terry. Terry says, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to Merry you guys Anne. too. Happy and everything. Mary Ann Hardy, hello. Happy everything to you. And I hope that everything's going well in your new locale. And who else? Barbara from uh, Barbara Granada from Hills. Granada Hills. Hello and welcome. Okay, so this what this yeah. Mary. Oh, good morning, Mary from Santa Margarita. So this is episode number twenty six. We're gonna hi Kelly. We're gonna dive right into the cactus cam and see what's going on on the course today. Oh, who is that, Carl? Santa's sneaking in there. Oh, somewhere. he put the Santa Nutcracker out on the wall. Oh my! But there's no golfers. They just went through. What Honestly, in the world is going on? They just went. Through. Well, they it is, the course is busy this week, so. Um, let's talk about our $10 Colorworks gift card winner from last week. The question was, what is your favorite holiday color? And this week's winner of the $10 Colorworks gift card randomly selected in the random thingamajizer is... Nancy, congratulations. I will get you that gift card via email. I do have your email, so I will send it along right after the program to you. And everybody, just a programming note, we're going to be off for two weeks like most people. So we're going to be back in the new year on Friday, January 8th. So let's see. Let's go right over to the kitchen remodel because quite frankly, it's a little boring in the kitchen remodel. Um, this is the current state of the kitchen remodel. So this is, it's lots of storage, lots of cabinetry, but Carl is busy putting in the filler pieces, which quite frankly take a lot of time and measurement, don't they, Carl? Yes. And other things. Um, so it's rather, it's rather boring to take pictures of. Not a lot of happens quickly at this point with baseboard and fillers. Now, if we go to the next slide, so my job has been in and out of sewing and secret sewing and designing is I'm actually in charge of cabinet and drawer making. So if anybody's ever done the IKEA cabinet system, you have your modular kind of cabinet, and then you have to go in and make all these drawers with lots of screws and bits and parts. And so my job is to make every drawer or every shelf unit and then go in and put the screw in those little sliders at everything. And lots of these drawers that we picked have inner drawers. So there might be a big drawer and then an inner drawer. Um, and you have to make sure everything is lined up. So it's kind of tedious, tedious work. But that's my job for the week. And then what's the next slide? Oh, look at that. Happy day. We did get the stove. So that was very exciting. This arrived two days ago. We haven't quite used it yet. Um, because of the construction going on, but we are going to actually endeavor to make ooh, fried eggs tomorrow morning. So we'll see how that goes. It's very exciting after not having a stove for almost six weeks. 
Um, we would have rather had gas, you know, put in a gas line, but um, it was so costly. Oh, we just, yeah, we just went with electric and that was fine. So it's an LG electronic stove. We'll see how that is. Apparently it has an air fryer system. So we're going to test that out too and see how that works. Um, and then this is more than you ever wanted to know, I bet. This is the current state of the kitchen as of this morning, as of 10 o'clock Pacific time here on the West Coast. It is a mess. Baseboards are in. Baseboards are going in, construction. Um, of course, the stove is covered up so it doesn't get scratched, um, all that good stuff. So, And I did manage to get my Island Batik uh, quilts done. So that is the last picture here of the four quilts that just went off to our friends at Island Batiks. This was super secret sewing in the middle of all the kitchen remodel going on. And so I just took a picture of the labels for you guys since I can't show you the front of these quilts, although you did see Mod Box at one point. You can see a little bit of the uh, binding. Well, the the binding. binding, you can see the binding. So that is the big update on the kitchen remodel. Um, hopefully when we return uh, after the new year on Friday, January 8th, we will have a, a much better uh, progress to show you and all that good stuff. So um, I want to jump right into my bright idea tip for this week. As you know, throughout the month of December, we have been doing tips of things to make your quilting easier. And so today's tip is all about paper piecing. And um, the video you're going to see is a compilation or an edited down version of paper piecing tips and tricks that I did for a quilt along. So if you've never done paper piecing, I want you to go check out our blog and search or go to the quilt along page on our website and search for the feeling groovy quilt along and go to week number four. And so if you've never done paper piecing or you think that you need some um, uh, a little bit more information, there's in that blog post, and in that quilt along for week four of the Feeling Groovy Quilt Along, there is um, a longer version of the video I'm gonna show you. It's an 18 minute video that takes you step by step through how to paper piece with all these tips and tricks in it. But we're gonna go ahead and roll the video. This is tips and tricks for paper piecing. Here we go. Use a cheap white Xerox paper, or you could use Carol Doak's foundation paper, which is specifically made for paper piecing. It's a thin beige paper that's sold at most quilt stores, and it makes it super easy to tear away once you're done stitching. Regardless, when you go to make copies on your home printer, make sure that you have your printer set for printing at 100% or printing at actual size. Once you make one copy on your printer, go ahead and measure the one inch scale at the bottom to ensure that you're printing at full size. Do this by simply taking a ruler and placing it along the one inch scale right here. If it measure, measures one inch, you are ready to go. This is a copy from my printer. You can see that you have printing on one side and nothing on the other side. The printed side is the side that we will sew on. The blank side is where we will place our fabrics in the sequence that is numbered here. So we'll start with number one, which is a black piece. We'll go to number two, which is a white piece. You'll also notice that there are solid lines that connect or uh, come in between each one of the spikes and they're labeled sew one, sew two, sew three. These are the lines that we will sew on and then they are in the sequence that we will sew on. So we will start with sew line one and you would sew directly on the line. You'll also begin and end your stitching about a quarter inch beyond this actual sew line that's drawn. So for sew line one, I would begin my stitching about a quarter inch above it and I would end my stitching beyond the dashed line because the dashed line indicates the cut line of the template. The next thing I'm going to do is to start to place my fabrics in the sequence that is mentioned here. So one is a black piece, but I need to place my fabrics on the opposite side of the pattern. So what I'm going to do is turn it around and I can kind of see the solid lines of that one shape coming through the pattern right there. You can also hold this up to a window. I'm going to take my first black strip and place it right over so it overlaps the one shape. I'm going to pin that in place for a minute. And the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to place 
a white shape or the number two shape, but I need to place it along the sew line, right sides together with the first black piece of fabric. So how do I know where to place my fabric? I'm going to take a couple pins and I'm going to pin right through onto this sew line. And I'll show you what this does. It creates a guide for me on the other side. So if I turn over to this side, you'll see that I've got pins showing through right here, if you can see them, right there and right there. And those pins are going at an angle, and that's the angle of that first sew line. So what I need to do is follow that angle when I put my next piece, which is white, right sides together with the black piece. So I'm not going to put it like this. I'm going to actually put it right sides together and I'm angling it at the same angle that I see the pins going. You can also draw this line in if that helps. So I put it over there. I want to make sure that the edge of my white strip is about a half inch beyond these pins that are showing through. And you can see I've got it angled like that. What I'm going to do next is simply go over to this side, remove my pins off the sew line, and move them over to hold both pieces of fabric in place. I'm now at my sewing machine. I place the entire unit underneath the needle. Remember, I'm going to start about a quarter inch above the actual sew line, sew one. And I'm just going to sew directly on that line, all the way down. You can go ahead and remove these pins if they're in your way, or just leave them in place. And you're going to sew all the way beyond the dash line. Coming back to the cutting board again, I've now sewn on sew line two and I need to trim away the excess before I press this out. So again, I flip the pattern 180 degrees. I fold back on that sew line, sew line two that I just sewed, and I'm going to actually cut away all of this extra fabric to reduce the bulk. Again, I put my ruler a quarter inch line on the actual edge where the paper is folded back, and I trim everything away. Once you're done trimming down, leave the paper in place. That's very important. Yes. Yeah, that was fast. Yeah, that, that exit was a bit fast because I, yeah, I fast. when I was editing it, quite frankly, yes. When I was editing the, the last tip there, which was leaving the paper in place, I then went in and like kind of just went in and kept talking and talking and talking and I had no out so I just cut myself off on the video but anyway so those are my big seven tips for paper piecing if you haven't tried it please do try paper piecing choose a simple pattern like the feeling groovy spiky border here this is a fairly simple pattern to start paper piecing and I'll show you the back I still have the paper in place but I'm going to review these seven tips. So, you know, the first one was use um, the Carol Dokes foundation paper, which is available at your quilt shop. Um, or you can use a very, very, very cheap, thin Xerox paper. Um, and this is when you need to make copies or several copies of the pattern. Um, also, if you do make copies of the pattern on your printer at home, make sure that you click off scale to fit the page. Make sure that you're printing at 100% and make sure that you measure, all pattern designers usually give you a scale measurement. It's either a one inch box or it's a one inch a line, but there's some type of scale measurement that is on the back side of the paper pattern so that you know that you have actually made copies at 100% and you're not reducing or enlarging this pattern through your printing process on your printer. So that's the second tip. You know, third tip, study the pattern. I do it all the time. I'll take a pattern, I'll look at it when I'm paper piecing. I wanna make sure I understand what the sew line is, what the dash lines indicate, usually cut lines, where I start, where I stop, that kind of thing. Make sure that you reduce your stitch length um, to like 2.0 or smaller so that the paper tears away easily. Make sure you're starting and stopping a quarter inch uh, above and beyond the sew line, going through the dash line if you have to. 
um, so that all your, your fabric pieces are, are securely connected and stitched together. And tip number four, that is a lifesaver for me because one of the biggest problems I find, or at least I do, is that when I have angular pieces like this, um, you know, one of the biggest problems people have when they paper pieces, you're having to flip your brain backwards. So you're going to actually place your fabric on the blank side of the paper, but the pattern is on the other side where there's printing. And so when you have an angle like this, you're having to flip over and place your fabric on on the other side and the angles get mixed up in your brain. So by pinning right on that sew line, when you flip it over to the blank side where your fabric is, you've got those pins showing through, guiding you at an angle where to place that next piece. And I would urge you to go check out, if, you're, if you need more explanation, go to the Quilt Along page on the Colorworks website, check out the Feelin' Groovy Quilt Along, which is what this pattern is, Feelin' Groovy. Check out Feelin' Groovy week number four and watch the lengthier video that, that I just used to cut this little tip and trick from. But we, that tip number four is a lifesaver, and I'm going to show you why it's a lifesaver. That means pinning on the, the sew line before you place other pieces on, which will give you an angle. I have a UFO in process that's been going on now for three, oh, three years. It's Violet Crafts. It's the, what is it called? Elevated Abstractions, Elevated Abstractions um, Desert Mirage Quilt. I love it, and I actually was going to make it for our bed. Um, it'll probably be now five years before it gets done. It's a 90 by 90 inch quilt, and I'll tell you how far I've gotten. Here it is. In three years. Okay, so I have basically, yeah. basically one quarter of the mountain and moon done. But, as you can see, this is several uh, pieces of the pattern put together. Now, if I turn it over, it's going to be a mess. But can you see all those angles that are going on? So I use that little trick that I explained in tip number four, where I pin on the paper side the angle, the next angle, the pins show through on the other side, and then I know exactly, exactly where to place my fabric. So that's tip number four. Tip number five was, uh, we talked about it, reduce your stitch length. Tip number six, always trim. And of course, you know, here's the big kicker. If you trim through the paper pattern, you've done something wrong. So always flip the paper pattern away on the stitch line, away from you, and then trim that excess fabric to a quarter inch. There is a ruler out there called Add a Quarter Ruler that you can buy at your quilt shop, which has a, a, a hinge or a, a lip on it, and it just hangs right on the edge of the fabric, and you just trim a quarter inch within a quarter inch. It's a great little tool or notion, but quite, quite frankly, you can use your ruler at home and just line up the quarter inch. You just want to trim that excess fabric away. And then above all things, do not, do not remove the paper until you have the entire pattern put together um, because that paper helps keeping ev everything in place and it's just important. So those are my big bright idea tips and tricks. I hope they helped you for paper piecing. Please check out week number four of Feeling Groovy if you want to try paper piecing or you don't know where to start or um, you just want some more information. Um, so with that, if there's any there's questions, questions, do we have questions, comments, what? Well, Nedra mentioned what you did. Nedra, what did you, oh, did, what? Reducing the stitch did length. Did you mention, yes, yeah, reduce important. the stitch length is important because um, it perforates the paper for you. And Marianne says, great tips. Thank you, Marianne. We appreciate that very much. And Nancy, Nancy says, groovy. I completed the Feeling Groovy Quilt Along and really enjoyed it. I actually made it a little bigger. Now I need to quilt it. Well, I would love to see it when it's done, Nancy, when you get done quilting it. That would be great. And Jennifer June says, I love that. Oh, Jennifer Hickson. Hello, Jen. I love that pattern so much. Thank you, Jen, very much. Okay, so those are our big bright idea tips. I do want to move along and show you what I promised last week. We'll get Santa going because he's happy. The Probably. patterns. That, ooh, the patterns. There we go. Carl's loving his little sound effects that go along with our Colorishes collection. Um, you guys have been so great. Um, and I, we thank you all, all so much for your enthusiasm about the Colorishes collection. We can't wait for this to come out from Island Batiks in April. But I want to show you some of the new patterns that will be arriving um, after the first of the year, probably sometime in February. So let's go to the first slide. That's the whole collection there coming out in April with a 
little crayons that show you some inspiration and things like that. But the first uh, slide shows you, um, or the next slide, there it is. Um, they asked us to recolor some of our existing patterns first to see how the collection was going and what it looked like. So we took an opportunity to recolor our mini spiky pattern and our sunny pattern. And of course, you can see now the color wheel order going on. So the fabrics are all represent all colors of the color wheel and we did that on purpose so that you can make color wheel quilts which we love to do so this is color wheel order using our sunny pattern and our mini spiking pattern and if we go to the next one that is our la uh, waterfall pattern which Ooh. is another really nice quilt and um, those use 12 the 12 fabrics all total in the collection and again they're in kind of color analogous color arrangements yellows and oranges and greens with purples and uh, blues and all that so that's waterfall now onto the new patterns coming out for 2021 the first one is called color tops this is going to be like a two for one pattern and what i mean by that is that's the first pattern you make from when you get the fabrics together but quite frankly, because you're cutting triangles here and it's a beautiful pattern, you have a lot of triangles left over. So what you're going to do is you can actually go ahead, take those triangles left over, and you're going to make a second pattern, which I have yet to design. So um, just so you know, you have color tops will actually make two quilts out of one set of, set of fabrics, basically. You're going to buy one set of fabrics and you're going to sew like you're sewing for one quilt. But quite frankly, when you're done putting one quilt together, you've got all the pieces sewn to go ahead and just piece together the next quilt top. So it's a two for one, which is kind of exciting. This next pattern we really love, Labyrinth. Ooh. Okay, so I just finished one of these for Island Batiks out of a new batik collection coming out in about a year and a half. So I can't show you that, but I can show you the coloricious version of Labyrinth. This is a super, super fun, easy to put together block. It looks complicated, but quite frankly, it's all based on color combinations. So you're going to work with 12 fabrics total. Each fabric, and I think they're going to be like half yard cuts, each fabric is basically you cut the same amount from each fabric. So you just go ahead and cut the same increments from each piece of fabric you have 12 times. You cut your background and then it's all about color combinations. So you're going to take, you're going to have to make a color key and you're going to take a little bit of fabric one and it goes into this combination. Fabric two goes over here, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that will be in the pattern. It'll be all laid out super easy because Carl loves to do all those color combination things. So that is labyrinth. We're really excited about that. It's very fun. And this last quilt is applique. It's not going to be for everybody, but as you know, it's called mod squad. And as you know, Carl and I love 60s, 70s, kind of early 80s stuff. So when we designed this, we kind of designed it with that in mind of all of our love for the, the 70s and the, the pop art movements that were going on and disco and all that stuff. So this is all applique using the Colorish's collections as well as the Island Boutique solids. Uh, foundations very and um, it's very yeah it is it's very Andy Warhol very pop art um, you don't have to make the whole quilt I mean some of these some of the images you might say oh gosh that that one at the top left kind of looks like Prince yes, oh it, does. it might you might even see like a, a Elton John yeah, somewhere yeah. you know that kind of thing but it's a fun quilt and you can make pillows so you don't have to make the whole quilt if you have a favorite image or a favorite head with glasses and you want to make a pillow for your, your bed, you can do that too. So that one is called Mod Squad. So those are all the, the patterns that are coming out in the new year, the three new patterns, Color Tops, Labyrinth, and Mod Squad. And we're very excited about our Colorish's collection and we hope you are too. And please, please, please ask your local quilt shops to order it through their Island Boutique rep. It'll be out April 2021. And we thank you guys here. Santa's gonna be very happy about that. Yay! So we're, yes, well, we're yeah, very yeah, excited yes, about that. What? Oh, Kelly says, love those patterns. Thank you, Kelly. You Thank you, you and guys. Jennifer. Jen says, color tops and mod squad patterns. Ooh, yes. Yeah, we had a really good time with it. It's very fun. Um, and I'm gonna be working on, as soon as I get my sampling of that yardage, after the new year, I will be working on making those quilts as well. So I will be posting a lot of that probably uh, after the new year sometime uh, and showing you the progress of making all those new patterns for you. Okay, so 
fill it, what are we what are we doing? We're we're just ending up the program now. I think ending up the year. Ending up the year. Um, we'll be back January 8th, you guys. We really appreciate you hanging with us this year. It's been a tough year. We're all looking forward to the new year. And um, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas, a happy everything, happy Hanukkah. Um, what are we doing this weekend? Well, Carl wants to tell you what he's doing. And this is actually for everybody in England, including my Aunt, Aunt Jen. Aunt Aunt Jen. Back in England. These are your Christmas cards that I haven't sent yet because I was doing the kitchen. But they're on the way. You'll get them after Christmas, maybe. All about and inside is ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. But those are your Christmas cards. Didn't forget anybody. Merry Christmas. Hi, Jen. Yeah, so these are all coming your way in England. And if you like, I'm going to give a shout out to this artist. If you like these Christmas cards, I think Jen in Palm Springs knows this guy. This is the artist Shag. He goes by, um, his real name is Josh Agle, A-G-L-E. But you could, if you like this artwork, he's a, a very famous artist, uh, well-known throughout the mid-century modern movement. And you can go to shagstore.com. His um, store here in Palm Springs is wonderful. He does art, you know, you can buy prints there. You can buy glasses, scarves. He does all sorts of stuff. But these are his Christmas cards, and he has a lot of different other selections of Christmas cards. So if you like that kind of funky mid-century modern stuff, go check out shagstore.com. Um, it's a wonderful uh exciting place to, to pick up some great artwork. So with that, we thank you guys again so much. We love you all. Happy, happy, happy holidays to everybody. Be safe, be sane, have a wonderful holiday season with family, hopefully, and friends. Um, make your quilting coloricious as always and happy. And we'll see you in the new year, back with you on January 8th at the same time and the same channel. So happy quilting and Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Love to you all. Talk to you in the new year. Bye. Bye.